First of all, I would love a real adult-only party where adults can talk and have conversations without kids interfering. She ain't doing that. She is having a whole party for everyone to focus on her kids only. I need to know how to address this with her. This happened two times so far. The first time, we pretty much all assumed that she had to have planned for childcare that must have backed out or something. But since we weren't sure, we didn't ask her. I think everyone felt awkward believing they were paying babysitters for an adult night and then having to have her kids at the dinner table and them very actively part of the evening needing to be entertained, two young kids. Then it happened again. She sent out events for a dinner party in the evening with adults only on the invitation. Then when we got there, she had set up all these kids' games everywhere. She arranged the night around everyone kind of playing with her kids. And I could tell everyone felt awkward because people just wanted to have an adult night talking. But she had promised the kids that everyone would participate in the games they had set up and asked everyone if they wouldn't mind playing with the kids. I know that several people who attended the last event were very bothered by having to do this. People were whispering on the side about how they had to pay a babysitter for the night and would have rather bring their kid along and the kids could have just played games together if it's a family event. We barely ever pay a sitter, so I was kind of confused about why I had to spend my very limited babysitter funds on a night that I didn't even get to talk much with other adults because the kids were for sure the center of the evening. She even stopped everyone to gather around to look at the kids' recent art projects and tell stories and sing. Is this normal in other circles? What would you do if this was your friend? If I do say something, how would you explain this so that the person isn't mad or feels like you just don't like their kid? She was mad because everyone left early and she had catered the event, but I think people didn't want to stay and preferred to just go back to their kids because they felt a little disrespected by the way things went. People are saying they don't want to hang out with her anymore. Idik, what to do? Now for a few relevant comments. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Why is she so intent on the adults forming relationships with her kids and not their children? She doesn't have siblings. I think since the kids call her friends aunts and she wants her kids to be like nieces for us, she wants to help that bond grow. But it would also be good to have our own kids be included. Hope that makes sense. OOP responds to multiple comments that her friend's behavior is not normal. What is the friend's personality like? I can't explain her entire personality, but I don't think she is actively manipulating because she's a very kind and considerate person in all other ways. It's like she truly isn't realizing that people are bothered. I don't know if it is because she thinks we all love her kids so much that we want to spend quality time with them without our own kids distracting us. We do love her kids, but I prefer to also bring my own kid so they can all play together. I thought she also loved my kid and would want them to be there to play as well. If that's not the case, then I guess the friendship would be over. You explained it perfectly. We are so all shocked and confused. It's like, how does she think this is normal? What is going on in her head? And how do I bring it up without knowing her reasons? She was so happy for the gathering and felt it went great at first, before we left early. So it's hard to burst a bubble, but I have some great advice and fully plan on addressing it with her at the right time now. OOP on if her friend feels her children are more prioritized than the other children in the group. Oh, she for sure believes that. She gave her kids everyone's numbers and they text and call us from their little kid phones. I didn't even mention all that because it wasn't relevant to the party thing. If I'm being fully honest, it's a bit much. She deaf is like very attached to the idea of us all being a close part of her kids' lives and getting upset if anyone misses their events or activities. The kids do not seem to notice. All of us have been there since before they were born. Nobody has been a stranger. I have been holding them in my arms since they were a day old and fresh from the hospital, lol. The girls call us their aunts. This is normal to us and common for mom's best friend to be an aunt, but may not be in your region or area. 
Now for the four-day update. Hi everyone. I never expected so many people would have been interested in this situation, but I think it helps me feel vindicated that the situation was just as strange as I had perceived it to be. I wanted to wait for the kids to get back into school so we could discuss it in person. And luckily, I didn't even have to bring it up because someone else did bring it up to her. And she was eager to tell me that people were mad and she didn't know what the problem is with what she did. I was able to get through to her, I'll call her Katie in this post, and also understand her perspective. Understand, not agree with, which I'll try to explain here the best I can. I cannot remember every detail of the conversation but can paraphrase all the key parts. One, she had been upset because one of our friends, Molly, was taking care of her toddler while Katie's kid kept trying to show her something. Katie noticed this and felt bad that her daughter just wants to share things with people she thinks of as her family aunts. We are just friends, but the kids call each other aunts and each other's kids cousins. So she wanted to build a stronger relationship between her kids and her close friends. She thought that us spending time with her kids away from our kids would be the way for us to show her kids better attention. This is especially important to her because she is an only child, her parents are dead, her husband is an only child, and his parents are dead. Her children have no biological family. She is worried about what will happen to them if she died, etc. Her mom died when she was a teenager and she feels anxious about her health. Two, she doesn't feel that other people's kids need the same type of bond with her because our kids have biological aunts, uncles, and cousins. She thinks they should be able to go spend time with their biological family and assume that we were all sending our kids to our family and not paying a babysitter. She has no understanding of what it's actually like and romanticizes it. She was shocked to find that my siblings don't just drop their lives to babysit my kid. People who have siblings still pay babysitters and did for her parties. Three, she feels that she paid for all the food and wine and that alone should cover the expense of the babysitter, even if we did pay one. She knows that paying a sitter plus dinner would still cost more since she catered everything from a very expensive place and we should have just been happy to get free food and drink. And if playing some kids game is the price for that, it's not a bad price. Essentially, she argued at first that if someone pays for everything, they can decide. And if we want a different type of gathering, we can foot the bill and throw that gathering. Now, how I handled this. That last note did eventually change to a more understanding perspective as I explained more and more about how even though she is technically right, she cannot maintain strong friendships with this mindset. You cannot provide meals for people with strings attached and deception involved. We didn't know until we got there and expect us to love it. She can do whatever she likes, but people can also end a friendship if they like. So she is free to do it, but not free from the consequences of it. I also was very clear to her that if her goal is to get stronger bonds for her kids, the way to do that is to love and bond with our kids and include them. That part seemed to be totally unexpected to her. I had to explain that people will be so upset by the fact that she isn't including their kids in kid events or isn't accepting that a parent needs to take care of their own kid first before focusing on hers, that they won't even want to be part of her family because that isn't what a family is. My sister doesn't expect me to leave my kid behind and be only with my nephews. My sister would never tell me to not bring my daughter to a family event because she loves my daughter and that makes me love her and my nephews even more. I had to explain all this. Lastly, she is rich and did grow up rich. And as the only child, she admits that she struggles to see things from other perspectives or to consider others' feelings. And she has to make a conscience attempt to really see outside of her own wants and needs. She said she even talks about this in therapy. And that's why she goes out of her way to do nice things for us. Because that's her way of trying to actively be a generous and caring person. She did cry as expected especially when she was talking about her kids not having any family and her mom and dad dying. And I'm very glad I did not mention it at the parties, like everyone suggested, 
because I would have never wanted her to do that in front of people. It goes deep and she needs therapy to continue working on it. Overall, she did come around to the realization that she needs to alter her way of thinking about it and do things differently if she wants to achieve what she claims. She continued to reiterate how much her kids love me and how much she does love my kid too. She said she wants to do things the right way. She just is frustrated because what makes sense to her doesn't make sense to other people. But she accepts that it's her who will need to fix her way of thinking. A lot of crying and some arguing, but overall, it does appear that we are still friends. We hugged and she said she is going to do something nice for everyone and their kids. If anyone still has questions about specific things said, I can try to answer in comments. Appreciate everyone's help. I felt much better going into it, knowing that I was not wrong for standing my ground on this. Now for a few important comments. When asked about having conversations with her friend about being out of touch with different perspectives for social and mental growths, OUP said, it seemed genuine to me, and it is not the first time that she has been so out of touch. It's vastly different from how I was raised with four siblings in a poor home. I have to stop to consider what her mind is like, and she needs to stop and consider how different her perspective is. I can't fathom being so selfish because I didn't even get my own birthday party growing up. My sister's birthday was close to mine, so we shared a party. Lowell, I hope she is serious about doing better, and if not, I can always wish her the best, but distance myself. It went as well as I could hope. Tough at first, but cooled down and became more emotional than an argument. I think she needs to continue therapy about her parents because she is holding on to a lot about her mom dying and her dad just used money to take the place of raising her after she died, then he died too. There are some things that money can't buy, in this case, social awareness. When asked if her friend is receiving therapy, OP said, She's been in therapy for forever, so I'm starting to feel like these people just take her money because, like, she even mentioned that the therapist thought it was a good idea to have her friends get closer to her kids to ease her anxiety about them lacking family. I don't know if she misunderstood the idea. I highly doubt they intended for her to do it the way she did it. Either that or the therapist is out of touch as well. Lol. Yeah, and I'm totally wondering if she misunderstood what they had said for her to do. She may have taken that bit of advice and made up her own way of doing it, which clearly didn't work out, lol. When asked if OP feels like her friend has been clueless on how things should be when socializing with other people, OP said, if you understood more of her life, it would maybe make more sense. I am just now starting to realize how warped some of her perceptions still are. As I said, she lost her mom. Then before her dad died, he didn't really nurture her, but just kind of gave her money and a nanny to take care of her. Her nanny was her only friend. Her dad had specific issues, and I won't say more than that, but she was not allowed to ever have a friend over or be with friends. She was homeschooled for some time. He had different types of beliefs than I would say is typical. I think she seems so normal at times, that I forget how different her life has been until a situation like this happens, and I realize she sees the world differently. Am I the idiot for confronting my husband about his creepy secret box of my photos and lingerie? I found out that my husband has been keeping a secret box of mementos on the top shelf of our closet, and I don't know what to do about it, or if I should even bring it up. I honestly don't know how the hell I'm supposed to talk about this. I genuinely am in disbelief. So backstory, my husband, let's call him Lee, and I have been together since our sophomore year in high school. We were each other's first everything. And for the most part, I feel like we honestly have a picturesque marriage. I'm currently five months pregnant with our first child and have taken it upon myself to DIY the guest bedroom into a nursery. But to do that, I wanted to sort through the stuff in there and get rid of anything unnecessary, okay? I think it's relevant to say that I'm pretty short, 5'2", so I don't really store things up high since I can't reach, but my husband's a foot taller than me, so he doesn't have this tendency, which is how I found the memento box on the top shelf. It was just a plain cardboard box, 
so I didn't think much of it at first, but since I didn't remember putting it up there, I wanted to see if it was something that needed to go into storage or if it was just junk. I don't know what I was expecting, but inside the box there was a photo album, a trash bag, and a black leather bag. The album just had my name, plus Lee's written on the cover, so I thought it'd be something sweet because Lee has a tendency to gift me sentimental things. But no, the album was full of unclothed pictures of myself, all of them marked with dates and a short journal-like entry. The first one was from our first time from when we were teens, and the latest one was marked from the night I surprised him with my pregnancy announcement. Most of the pictures are poor quality, but some are clearly of me sleeping after the deed. These journal entries talk about how he ranks each experience and his favorite part of it, like some weird logbook. Inside the bags were some of my lingerie and even some old razors and hairbrushes. I don't know why on earth he keeps them, but he has two bags full. I don't know how or what to do. I mean, is this normal behavior? Is this some twisted form of romance on his part? A part of me feels like I shouldn't feel as disgusted as I am, but this violates my own boundaries since I explicitly told him in the past that I was against sending or giving him any unclothed photos. Reddit, what do I do? I love my husband, but I'm not sure how to confront him about this. Now for a few comments. Commenter one said, no, this is not normal, at all. This is also not romantic, at all. The fact that he took pictures of you sleeping and has them in an album is incredibly concerning. Him ranking times y'all had intimacy is setting off more red flags. This is creepy and inappropriate behavior. I can't imagine my fiance taking pictures of me sleeping, let alone him keeping a log of our intimacy life. Girl, you have to show him the box and demand answers and don't go easy on him. None of this is okay or normal and you should really be concerned as to why he thinks any of that is okay. Another commenter said, taking creepy pictures of you as you sleep naked and having naked photos of you as a minor in general and then rating every intimacy experience with you is not normal at all. The lingerie too, and the razors and hairbrushes make it even creepier. This is creepy, obsessed stalker shoot. Then another commenter said, what in the Joe Goldberg? Now for the five month update. So I'm not sure if anyone cares. And while I didn't reply to any of the comments, I did end up talking with my husband about this just a few days ago. I'm not gonna lie. I wanted to just act like I didn't see anything and go on with my happy life. But after giving birth to my baby girl about a month and a half ago, I guess the stress and everything added up and I let it slip in an argument. I don't remember all that was said, but I was exhausted. And my husband, while he's been super helpful and took over the household chores for me and helps out with baby girl, had just been getting on my nerves. I sort of exploded on him in a way I'm not proud of. Worst of all, he wasn't even doing anything. All he had been doing was reminiscing about how I used to make a Sims family of us when I was in uni and how creepy it was, he said it endearingly. I don't really know why I got so mad, but I basically said something along the lines of how he's the creepy one because he has a secret stash of stuff hidden from me. I felt really bad because he got all pale and went quiet and then he sort of said he needed space and went to blow off some steam at the shooting range, which he does a lot when he needs to think, so I didn't question it. He came back home around dinner and said he was ready to talk. I asked him about all of the things I found, especially the photos. I reminded him again that I never agreed to making nudes of any sort, and he apologized and agreed to burn them. Apparently, our history goes back further than even I knew, as he recounted that we actually met before high school. I had no idea, but his mom, who's a divorce attorney, was the very same one my mom used when she separated from her first husband. Not my dad. I called my mom after to confirm, and she told me it was true. But her and my mother-in-law never told me because my mom's divorce was messy and she hates talking about it. Anyways, back to the first meeting thing. My mother-in-law, at the time, often had Lee hang out around her office after school and it was during one of these days that my mom had to take me with her to speak with mother-in-law in person. Lee was actually the boy that I played with in the waiting room. I can't believe he remembered that because I totally forgot it. 
So according to him, that first meeting was the day he knew I was special. Lee told me that while he had tried to pass it off as a crush, as he got older, it never really went away, which led him to look into his mom's case files. In my state, attorneys have to keep them for seven years, and he found my mom on Facebook, then my dad in her friends list, and managed to find my first and last name in order to find my Instagram. He had convinced his parents to let him transfer from his private K-12 school to my public high school, using the excuse that they had a better athletics program, which isn't actually far-fetched since my high school was one of the best in the state for that. Once he found out where I was going, thanks to my dumb self putting it in my bio, I thought that us meeting was a sheer coincidence and that we fell in love naturally, a classic sort of high school sweethearts. But no, Lee had orchestrated it all. I took my daughter with me to stay with my mom and stepdad while Lee agreed to stay home and let me think. I spoke to my mom as well as mother-in-law and father-in-law. Lee's parents are not happy with him in all honesty and mother-in-law is especially mad because of client confidentiality. My mom gave me some good advice, that being that I should reflect on if Lee had displayed any other red flag behaviors. I can honestly say that no, he hadn't. But since I know I'm biased, I asked my friends and those close to me if they noticed anything. So far, everything else about Lee seems to check out. I've never felt endangered by him, even when I told him I needed some distance for a few days. I wanna make this marriage work, but is this something that therapy can fix? Another comment from OP. Hi, this is really late for a reply. I'm sorry about that. I wasn't ready to acknowledge it for a long time. Lee told me, that he didn't mean anything by it and wanted to just have a keepsake collection of some memorable moments we shared. But he did acknowledge that he knew it was wrong and apologized, and he promised me he'd get rid of the pictures by burning them. OP updated in a comment on a different post. Lee and I have since been going to couples counseling and he's going to individual therapy. After the whole drama that happened a few months ago, he sort of had a come to Christ moment where he realized that the way he had been obsessing over the idea of me wasn't the same as a healthy love. We spent a few weeks apart so he could work on himself and he turned over his devices, passwords and accounts to me so that I could go through and calm my worries because I was really anxious about the explicit photos. Since then though, we're back in our house and with our baby girl and our marriage is back on track and better for it. Am I the idiot for asking my husband to cancel his bro's only trip when I need him most? This situation has caused a lot of tension between my husband and me, and now I'm questioning whether I'm being unreasonable. I, female 30, gave birth to our first child, Olivia, two months ago. Being a first-time mom has been both beautiful and overwhelming. My husband, Jake, 32M, was incredibly supportive during the pregnancy and promised that after Olivia was born, he would be there for me every step of the way, especially during those challenging first few months. Before Olivia was born, Jake and his friends had been planning a bros only trip for this summer, a week long vacation to a cabin in the mountains for hiking, fishing, and bonding. When the trip was being discussed, I reminded Jake that Olivia would only be a few months old and we would be deep in the newborn phase. He reassured me that if things got too tough, he would cancel the trip to help me out, and I trusted him. Now that Olivia is here, things have been harder than I anticipated. Between the sleepless nights, breastfeeding struggles, and just trying to adjust to motherhood, I've been feeling overwhelmed. Jake has been helpful, but I can tell he's excited about this trip, which is coming up next month. Last week, I asked Jake if he could consider canceling the trip, reminding him of his promise. I told him that I'm struggling and that having him gone for a whole week would be really tough on me. He seemed surprised and a bit hurt that I was asking him to cancel. He said he's been looking forward to this trip for months and that he needs a break too. He also pointed out that his parents live nearby and could help if I needed support while he was away. I understand that Jake needs a break and wants to spend time with his friends, but I can't help feeling like this is a time when I really need him by my side. I tried to explain that while I appreciate his parents' help, 
it's not the same as having him here. Jake said that I'm being unfair by asking him to cancel the trip after all the planning that went into it, and that I need to trust him to make sure I'm supported even if he's not physically there. Now, we're at a bit of a standoff. Some of my friends think I should let him go, saying that it's important for him to have some time away, especially after all the stress of becoming a new dad. But others agree that it's too soon for him to take off for a week and that he should prioritize being home with me and Olivia. So am I the jerk for asking my husband to cancel his bro's only trip to help me with our newborn after he promised he would? Now for some top comments. First commenter, you were uncomfortable for nine months. You went through labor. You are now breastfeeding. What does he need a break from? He was a jerk when he even planned this trip. He was a bigger jerk when he lied about canceling. And he's the giant, gaping, insanely awful jerk now that he thinks it's unreasonable for you not to want him to be gone for an entire week when you're already overwhelmed. It doesn't seem like you'd want his parents to stay for that week while he's gone. This made me furious. I hope this is his only misstep, though I doubt it. Not the jerk. Another commenter. I assume Jake will be looking after Olivia for a week once you've stopped breastfeeding and can go away for a break. Let Jake know that if he uses his parents as free childcare, it will result in a further week of rest being required. Jake seems oblivious to the struggles you are facing with your child and selfishly prioritizes his own needs over you and Olivia. Next commenter, not the jerk. Part of being a parent is sacrificing your own wants and desires for your child. Part of being a good husband is listening to your wife when she says she needs you. Frankly, he should have considered canceling it when he knew the baby would be here by the time the trip came up. Now for the update. Hey everyone, I just wanted to give a quick update after reading through most of the replies. I was honestly overwhelmed by the amount of support and understanding I received. Thank you so much to everyone who took the time to respond. Your kind words and thoughtful advice really helped me feel less alone in this situation. A lot of you suggested that I should also take a week off, letting Jake stay with Olivia to get a break for myself. I really appreciate the sentiment behind that suggestion, but there are a couple of reasons why it's not realistic for me right now. First of all, I'm breastfeeding, so being away from Olivia for that long would be really difficult logistically. But beyond that, and this is something I know I need to work on, I just don't feel comfortable being away from my baby yet. I know it's not healthy to feel like I can't have her out of my sight, but I can't help it. I guess it's just that new mom anxiety that's really hard to shake. I've been debating whether or not to show Jake this thread. I'm worried that reading it might hurt his feelings, but I'm definitely going to have another conversation with him about everything. I'm willing to compromise and let him go on the trip but I think a whole week is just too much. I'm leaning towards suggesting that he limit the trip to a maximum of three nights so he can still have some time away with his friends but not be gone for an entire week. I'll update again after we've talked. Thanks again for all the support, everyone. It really means a lot to me. Now for the next update. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to share another update after having a very long and emotional talk with Jake. I won't get into every detail of our conversation, but I'll touch on the most important points. After putting Olivia to bed, I went straight to bed myself, feeling utterly exhausted. Jake was already asleep, but for some reason, the weight of everything just hit me all at once, and I started crying uncontrollably. My sobbing woke Jake up, and he immediately asked me what was wrong. I told him that I was just tired, but then I opened up about how anxious I'd been feeling about his trip and being left alone with Olivia. I admitted something I've been reluctant to say out loud, that Jake hasn't been as involved as I thought he would be. This was one of my biggest fears when we found out we were having a baby. For context, Jake has a rocky relationship with his own dad. I won't go into detail about why his dad isn't the best, but his mom remarried when Jake was in middle school and his dad wasn't very present in his life. Jake has expressed to me before that becoming a father was scary for him because he's afraid of being a bad one, just like his dad. When he first told me that, I thought it would make him into a great father, 
because it showed how much he cared about being a good dad long before we were even pregnant. When I vented to him about all of this, at first, he tried to defend himself. He admitted that he's been freaking out about having a baby for so long and just didn't want to tell me. He said he didn't want to stress me out while I was pregnant because he knows how much I've always wanted to be a mother. Hearing him say that made me feel guilty, like I hadn't seen how much he's been struggling internally. I had tried to convince him that he was going to be a great dad when we had this conversation long ago, and now it all felt more complicated. I thought to myself, this can't go on much longer. I realized that if he was going to keep pulling away like this, I didn't know if I could handle it. And so I asked him, is this what our life is going to look like from now on? Me with Olivia and you away? Because if it is, Jake, then I don't think I can continue on like this. Jake told me to calm down and assured me that he wasn't going anywhere. Then he got really emotional. He even started to tear up. He said he didn't want to turn into his dad and that he hadn't realized that going on this trip could be a preliminary step toward becoming the absentee father he feared he might be. He apologized for not considering me and Olivia as much as he should have. Long story short, Jake called his friends and told them he wouldn't be able to make the trip. He's even started planning a little family getaway for the three of us next year when Olivia is a bit older. It was a tough conversation, but I feel like we're on the same page now, and I'm hopeful that things will get better from here. Thanks again to everyone for your support and advice. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but I'm grateful for this community helping me navigate it.